Welcome back to another live stream and today let me know in the comments where you are watching from because we are live from Dubai and uh, today I was thinking uh, specifically for the space investors out there to have a kind of uh, let's say a little bit of a play here because I want to discuss a moonshot idea what if Jeff Bezos would really really take a hostile takeover of Virgin Galactic. Well, this is a quite interesting topic. And before we diving in, because there's a lot of uh, uh, news about uh, Blue Origin today and the NASA suing and everything, uh, let's have a look. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram as well, Wolf of Dubai Danny, if you want to follow me, what I'm doing day to day and so on. And I think this is a very interesting topic and we have a couple of people here already. Uh, Guatemala, Netherlands, to Russia, Pakistan, Netherlands, Denmark, Texas, Florida, St. Petersburg um, is already in the house. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know if you have any questions, uh, but I would dive directly into the topic first. Um, let's have a look into the markets. The markets somehow, uh, you know, recovered a little bit here towards the end of the day, still about uh, one and a half hours to go. Let's say if the S&P can hold that. Uh, important again is the 10 year uh, uh, yields, right? Which are again spiking, okay? Again, we are spiking as you can see here. Uh, so I'm curious if, if the S&P can hold against that or what we will see next. Now, um, if you know, if you might, if you follow the space industry, there's two things that are new. First, um, there is one interview, one new interview of Elon Musk. You should really, really watch it. It's really, really nice. It's it's just go on YouTube, watch the latest. It's, it's like one hour long, but he talks a little bit about the space industry. And he says, you know, there was a reason why NASA chose SpaceX. Not only there were 3 billion, 50% less expensive than Blue Origin for the moon lander, but also they have, you know, created this unbelievable, uh, you know, vehicle that is eight times as good as the one of Blue Origin, you know. So that's a quite interesting thing uh, that is actually, you know, uh, uh, now in front of judges that will decide on that. Um, but there's a statement that just came out and uh, here, for example, uh, Blue Origin has failed to demonstrate pre, pre, uh, justice um, based on a stated BAA criteria of technical importance to agency programs and fund availability. Blue Origin has no chance of award. So you can see here that um, I think there's lots and lots of important um, uh, you know, factors that are now clear why SpaceX is better. Obviously, they have the better vehicles and so more experience. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, here NASA adds later on that Blue Origin had no chance of award. Uh, the agency also highlighted the uh, Blue Origin allegiance that SpaceX has a history of announcing schedules that it could not meet uh, for prior smaller and simpler launches and so on and so forth. So a little bit of suing and uh, I think that this is something that is uh, quite uh, negative for uh, Blue Origin in the end of the day, not only from the PR, 
but also from uh, the uh, overall situation with personal, okay? So here, for example, uh, one more thing here, they are saying Blue Origin offers no specific about pricing other than state a reduced total evaluated price in different funding profile. Had NASA invited a revised proposal to meet such a schedule? So, you know, they, they were invited even to uh, make a new proposal and so on and so forth, but were in the end not selected. Now, uh, that to the side, uh, you can see here that 17 staff left blue origin after moon uh, uh, suing, okay? And it, it makes sense because if you think about it, it's like uh, they are very high engineer, very high level engineers at the space companies. And what they uh, want to do is producing stuff and making stuff and making history and so on and so on, those things. Um, and if you are dragging them into, you know, suing, you know, a, a potentially better product and company, then, you know, it's nothing so fun anymore, right? So the question is really how you treat that. And the question is where are the high level people actually going? Are they going to space? It's Virgin Galactic. Are they going to SpaceX? We don't know, but are they going to NASA? Uh, so it's, it's quite interesting. But I think, you know, this is something that Jeff Bezos now, instead of suing, and this is something that, that Elon Musk said also in his interview, instead of suing, um, he should r rather try to put more into the uh, important, uh, yeah, mission of the company, okay? Now, why I'm thinking that Blue Origin could maybe potentially buy Virgin Galactic. Well, if you take one and one together, first, Jeff Bezos with Amazon has a huge list of acquisitions, okay? Think about that. Um, if you're going here to acquisitions, uh, this is just, uh, you know, let me see if different kind of um, companies and some of the companies were really exactly what Amazon is doing. For example, here, Souk.com from United Emirates was purchased for around $580 million, which is in fact um, a quite surprising amount because I think they will pay much more. And, um, you know, here you can see to expand, to get this new uh, people on board, the new territories on board. I think that Blue Origin at some point could say, you know, oh, a Virgin Galactic, let's say for $8 billion is not so bad because if you're thinking about it, um, how much actually uh, Blue Origin spends every my, uh, every year, it's $1 billion, okay? And he want to fund this by sales of Amazon stock. Now, on the other hand, you know, why not spend six, seven, eight billion dollars or even more, you know, $10 billion and get like 10 uh, years of uh, experience to the board. A peop about 1,000 people at Virgin galactic so could be something that uh, would be definitely quite fun okay um let us have a look what you guys are thinking space by the way minus 2.44 percent as of this of this uh, uh second just recovered a little bit here towards the end if we are looking into the stock chart um, what is obviously now important are the indicators, you know, moving average 50, uh, you know, it's definitely on the downtrend right now in terms of moving average, you know, uh, let's have, for example, the 200 moving average. Where are we there? Uh, also here we crossed it. So it's, 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 a let's say downtrending and let's have a look also one last thing. Um, the 100 moving average. Uh, so as you can see, all the averages were crossed. So in terms, if it stays that way that, you know, you are seeing here, 
uh, for the developments uh, towards you know down uh, then you know Virgin Galactic has chart wise you know not that much of uh, potential as of this moment this can obviously turn any second we know how uh, much uh, of uh, volatile this stock can be um, it's a long-term game so uh, I will now uh, check out um, your questions okay so uh, let me see it should be here uh, let me just put the chat right now into the picture so guys let put put in your questions so I will directly get into it once I put your comments here and um, I also put my camera here one second as you know I just came back to Dubai so I need to uh, re-establish some of the um, settings here but it's right quick and it's getting uh, really quick so uh, we have people from Moscow as well from Germany Russia Washington Florida US and so on so thank you very much for tuning in um, now let us have a look uh, Danny are you back to 11% fat yet no not yet <laughs> obviously I'm working on it and this is something that takes a little bit of time so I'm trying my best with dieting and sport um, what else um, I'm tired of that up and downs in the market go up yes stocks stonks don't uh, go always up right the up and down is the natural way for equities to go higher you know it's always you know a little bit back and forth specifically with young companies like Virgin Galactic uh, on the stock market you see that um, you know they can be quite volatile specifically those periods prior to revenue okay um Danny, did you bought your ticket yet to space? No, obviously not. Uh, there's no way. There's actually, I don't know why, but there's no, you can just uh, go on virgingalactic.com. Uh, uh, let us have a look together if something changed, but I don't think so. If you go to the Virgin Galactic page and uh, say, for example, you want to sign up, then you can just enter your uh, credentials and then you can basically get uh, you know registered but nothing about they didn't call me they didn't you know did anything so I'm very curious what they will do at the earnings if they will come with a surprise and say you know thousands of new people actually uh, came and wanted to have a ticket this would be this would be amazing anyway um, what else uh, <clears throat> when we can expect that the FAA give the permissions for the commercial flight I think uh, within the October I'm pretty sure that it shouldn't be dragged another month so I think during the October we should see that the FAA comes out and say you know here everything is fine we clear everything up and Virgin Galactic is not grounded anymore and then they just we need to fix the uh, uh, flight control problem the technical problem as you might know uh, and then we are good to go uh, what else uh, William is actually saying um, Michael Moses sold space stock yesterday that's that's true he sold about I think think like half a million dollar shares but if you're going into the SEC um, notice I, I'm, I'm trying let me see if I can pull it out um, because it's not so bad as it actually sound okay uh, let us have a look uh, events and presentations is it here no virgin galactic sec filings here we go filings and form so as of yesterday uh, you have seen this one so if we are zooming here a little bit towards the 
SEC filling. So here you see how many shares he sold. Um, and uh, basically, this is the amount four hundred and nine thousand uh, dollars. I don't. One second. This doesn't make sense from the amount. 959 times 2504 is not 400,000. Maybe that's a mistake here. Anyway, um, here's an explanation of responses. So the representer can always say, okay, why he did that uh, to maybe, for example, calm people down and so on and so forth. So you can see here represents the number of shares of common stock withheld by the issuer to cover the reporting person's tax withholding obligations upon the monthly vesting of restricted stock units granted on 25th of October 2009. So 25th of October, he got stock options and he need to pay uh, taxes on it. And therefore, you know, he sells a little bit of that to cover his personal taxes only. So nothing that should concern us and so on. So uh, with that said, I hope you liked it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I see you obviously tomorrow with a fresh new vlog, live stream and so on. Let me know in the comments what you would like to uh, talk about next and uh, I cannot wait to talk about more uh, about you.